Hello to today, Pastor Lamb, and it's always good to get together and share with you the word of the Lord. There's always something in it every time we read it and open it, study it, hear it, quote it, think it, memorize it. You know, it's always there. It's always powerful and always good. And we've been visiting this time of this pandemic. We've been visiting about the family a little bit on, in this sunny night hour, and we're going back soon. We're going back on the 28th to a Sunday evening service, and we invite you to join us. On Sunday morning, we're having two services, one at 9.30 and one at 10.30. But on these Sunday evenings, for these last few weeks, we've been talking about the family and the home. And today, again, I, as well, I want to visit with us about your family, about my family, about your home and my home. You know, God has a plan for our home, and it's a, and it's a successful plan. And the Bible is our marriage manual. There's no doubt about it. The home is intended to be happy and can only be happy as we follow the Lord's word. And so again, we desire to follow the Lord's word. And the passage of scripture I read will be in brief. You can study it on your own and read it. It's found in the book of Ephesians chapter five. And you find that there's a lot of different pieces about the family, um, different pieces about the man, pieces about the women, uh, pieces about them together, pieces about their relationships their words and their ways and their walks. And there's so much here. I'm going to take just a minute to read it. I'm reading in the book of Ephesians chapter 5. Submit yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife, even as Christ is at head of the church, and he's the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. There's much more to read, but I'm not going to take the moments to read it. But I want to talk to you about a few pieces you'll need to have in your family, a few pieces you'll need to have in your life if you'll make your home the very best it can be. And the first piece I would talk about is a person of the family. You know, we're unique and different. Shuggy and I are different. That's my wife now. 49 years in just a few weeks, and that's a long time. We kind of grew up together, and she was so young, I had to get her daddy to co-sign for her to get her out of the state of Ohio. And yeah, I know we were more mature than every other 19 and 17-year-old, of course, you know that. But that might not be true. But nonetheless, what I want you to know that I'm a piece and she's a piece. And what I do with me and what she does with her is important because of the role that we need to play in the family in our home. And so then... As we think about the peace of the person, first of all, I want you to say that we need to be saved. You say, Pastor Lamb, we've heard that for a long time. And you know what's still very true? You, you need to be saved. If your home will ever be what you want it to be, then you need to be truly saved. You need to be saved. Some reasons why you ought to be saved. First of all, because it brings you and it gives to you potential. You see, you're incomplete and you're not spiritually alive until you get saved. And so I want you to know that it gives you potential. Number two, it brings out the best in you. God's at perpetual work in your heart and in your life to bring out the best in you. The peace of a person, your person, your mate's a person, your children are persons, and every one of that family needs to be saved. It brings out the potential that gives you the best you could ever be. You know, God's at eternal work in bringing out your very good and your very best in you. And he does that when you are saved. It's the work of the Holy Spirit that grows you and it changes you and makes you so different. Can I say that person needs to be saved? Number two, you need to be surrendered to God. You need to be surrendered to God. Can I say that we need to be surrendered? Because surrender simply means giving God permission to work with you. When you give God permission to work with you, when you've given yourself in surrender and giving him all you are and all you have, it gives God the opportunity to make you what you need to be. And you know what God would want to make you. So can I say, as we think about the different pieces of the family, one piece is the person. The person needs to be saved. The, number two, the person needs to be surrendered. Number, th number three, my friend, not only does a person need to be surrendered, but they need to be serving. They need to serve. It's important. You see, God gives us permission, my friend, to become our full potential, and he wants us. You see, when we give God our, our ears and our heart to speak to, then God, in a fresh way, can maneuver you, can direct you, can walk you through this journey 
of the family, of the home. So it's very important, my friend, that a person is saved, that a person is surrendered, and a person is willing to serve, because then God can take a hold of you, and he can lead you what you need to be. Can I say that God has always used his day, and always used his house, and always used his word in a very unique way. And my friend, when we come to God's house on God's day, it's the work of God in the lives of people. Not only in the lives, my friend, for the family, but in the lives for life. And so can I say the different pieces that it's important, my friend, for your family and your home that you become, my friend, the right person you need to be, the right piece you need to be. Then number two, can I say that a piece of the puzzle of our family is commitment, unconditional commitment. You know, you are always loved in the family, but you're not always lovable. Oh, I've been loved a lot more than I deserve sometimes. Can I say that God wants you and God wants me to be committed in our love to our family, with our family, for our family, to our family? And can I say that God has an unconditional commitment to you? And yes, no, you are not always lovely, but you're always loved. The family, the home is a place of commitment where we committed each to each other for a long time. How long is that time? That's a lifetime. And can I say that when a person, my friend, that peace, my friend, is a saved person, is a surrendered person, is a serving person, is a Sunday person, my friend, God's at work in growing that person no matter how young or no matter how old, no matter if you've been married a week or you've been married uh, uh, most of your life. Um, can I say that God wants us to be the saved person? That's a piece of it. And if these pieces are not right, if these pieces are not in place, then, my friend, you run into problem. If you're not saved, you might be religious. You might be, if you please, reformed. You might be uh, all different things in your life. But if you are not saved, your home can never be, will never be what it needs to be. So I encourage you to be saved. And then number two, I encourage you to be committed unconditionally. You know, God's love for you is for what he can do for you. A committed love is a love, my friend, that's not given because of the person that's receiving it. It's given because of the person that gives it. Can I say God's unconditional love to you, God's commitment to me and to you is a commitment in such a way that it enables me to be what I can be. And can I say that's what God does for it? You see, only commitment will get you and get me through the tough times. And there will be tough times. There will not be easy times. There will be some... There'll be some real tough times in life, in marriage, and family. It's not a place of perfection, but it's a place, my friend, of capacity that we can grow and go through it. And then another piece I'll give to you, and uh, it's found in these texts so clear and so plain. The piece being the person. First of all, I said they need to be saved, and they need to be surrendered, allowing God permission to do what he wants. They need to be serving, and they need to be a Sunday person. And then I tell you that, my friend, the person needs to be committed to the family. And then number three, can I say a person, my friend, needs to be a giving person. Uh, they've called it the love barrel. And the idea is that there's a barrel in your family and you're either putting in the barrel or you're taking out. And you can't get more out than you put in. You know, I've got a checking account that uh, I've got. And you know what? You cannot take out more than you put in. If you take out more than you put in, there is trouble brewing. There's a there's a fee that's going to be charged to your account. Can I say that, my friend, when you and I are a part of the family, there's what's called a love barrel, if I can envision that in your mind. It's a, it's a barrel and it has an open lid on it. And anybody can reach down and get out of that barrel anything they want, anytime they want. But they got to be careful that they put more in than they take out. Can I say that we ought to put more in so someday when you are a little cranky or I'm a little grouchy or I don't respond just right. And you know, I've been known to do that. I am such a nice guy, but when I'm not a nice guy, I'm a terrible guy. And can I say that I need a lot of love in that barrel so when I reach for it, I can get some of that. I, I just lost you, didn't I? Just kicked the barrel over. Can I say that God wants you and I to realize that we can, every one of us, draw out more from the barrel? It's only because we put in it. You know, can I say that God has designed your family and my family to be a happy place? So enable God to give you and to give me the home that he wants us to have. It begins with the person. It continues with the commitment. And then it gives, 
it comes to a place where we put in and take out. You know, it's talking about the husband and the wife. And it's talking about how the man ought to love her. And it talked about how that with the conversation of his words, that he would make a difference in her life, that he might present it to himself, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Can I just, what I'm telling you is this, is that my friend, the man needs to put into his wife and the wife needs to put into her husband. And the moms and dads need to put into their children. Their children need to put into their moms and dads. And when they put those things in, when they put those things in that barrel, we can draw from that barrel at any time. So can I say some pieces to think about this evening? First of all, think number one, number one about my friend, your person, the peace. Be saved, be surrendered, allow God permission to work with you. Be service, be a Sunday person. Then be committed, unconditionally committed. And then my friend, be the biggest giver of your family because there's a day when you're gonna to wanna to reach in the barrel and get from. See, the family is not what it can do for you, but what you can do for it. And God wants you and me to have a wonderful, happy family. And you know, I've had one, and I have one, and I'm grateful for it, but it's not been always easy. It's because we're saved. Shuggy and I began by being saved. And then just yesterday, one of our first grandchildren were married, and there's gonna be a lot more of them these next few years. But what I want you to understand and know about that is literally that, my friend, it's an extension of the blessings of God because of us doing what God wants us to do. You know, you can make your home what you want it to be. Someone said, a lady is a lady when you marry her. And then after you've been married her to her after five years, she's now become what you have you invested in her. So invest in your wife, invest in your husband, invest in your children, invest in your home. What a place. What a place to give yourself to the Lord, to each other, for the joys of life. And God has plenty of them. He's got enough for you and he's got enough for me. So let's get them. Let's get all of them. And so because we're believers in Christ, we can grow and we can have the home that we need to have. And God wants me and God wants you to enjoy that. Enjoy him. You know, there was a placard that was put over a, <clears throat> a table of a family. And it, it went it with such, such sweet words. It talked about that he is a silent He's a silent listener in every conversation. He's a, he's a person that sits at the table between us. And he's forever here. He's forever around us. So let's allow the Lord to work with our hearts and work with our lives. Hey, look for you next Sunday morning if we don't see you. Um, 9.30 and 10.32 independent services. Sunday evening at 6 o'clock online. And then the 28th, we're coming back. Join us in our Bible fellowship classes on Sunday night. Small group, you'll have a trip of a lifetime. Love you. And if we can be of help to you in these times, be sure and call us and we'd be glad to help. Until then, God bless and goodbye.